this quick video together because there's uh, a lot of really negative news around at the moment with Greece and um, you know with BHP uh, pulling out of the Olympic Dam expansion and consumer confidence figures not kicking up. So an awful lot of negativity and we've seen some pretty big falls this week. So I just want to have a look at whether we're uh, perhaps to a point where markets might turn around and bounce, at least in the short term, uh, or uh, whether there's something uh, more major going on. So just looking at it from a, a purely fundamental point of view, the, the relative valuations now compared to 2010 and 2011, where we had significant falls uh, that started in, in May, whether we're in the same situation, and I think really, uh, really definitely that we're we're not. The relative valuations are much much easier than they were at the same point in 2010 and 11, and that's because perhaps people have already got memories of that sort of events that happened. Um, major tops in the market, and there's certainly a lot of talk now about the fact that we may be re-entering a bear market, but major tops generally occur when interest rates have to start to be pushed up and we're not we're definitely not seeing that on a global basis. You've got interest rates effectively at zero in uh, in America or in Japan, um, extremely low in um, in Europe and the UK. So I don't think that's going to happen. Um, the other factor is that normally significant tops occur when sentiment is somewhat bullish. Generally the uh, the American um, investor sentiment surveys need to be above fifty. Uh, they're now somewhere like low 30s from memory. So sentiment is just far too bearish for uh, the recent high a week or two ago in the S&P to have been a, a significant top. In the US, um, some of the more economically sensitive stocks, uh, such as consumer discretionary, are setting 52-week highs. There's no way you're going to be seeing that if we're about to... Um, uh, slide into a recession and a much more significant market decline. Now let's have a look at, uh, this is the S&P. Um, you can see the pattern it's tracing out here. I've had 13.20 as a target, or 13.22 actually to be exact, as a target for quite some time. It's forming a, an ABC pattern to the, to the downside, which is a typical crowd behavioural pattern in financial markets. So we finished at 13.24 overnight, just two points above it. Uh, you can see that um, we're quite oversold now on the RSI. It doesn't get down here very often. You can see even when we had that dip in November of last year, we weren't as low. And, um, and really the low in August of last year, at the bottom of the mini crash, uh, wasn't too much lower than where we are now. So definite support level uh, around here. Let's have a look at the US dollar index. It's forming, it's right up there at a, at a double top. Uh, it's not to say that it'll, it'll turn over, but it's a double top. It's way overbought on the RSI. It would be a particularly good point for the US dollar to turn down, which would then mean commodities go up, stock markets go up. Uh, so that all fits, those two things coming together really quite nicely. Uh, and as you can, as you saw in the S&P, there aren't any real wild swings at the top of the market. We're, we're not really seeing the kind of volatility that would indicate a market top. Uh, let's have a look at the VIX index, which is the, the fear index in the States. Uh, look, it's ticked up a little bit in the last uh, month or two, but it's still only just over 22, uh, which is not indicating any significant issues at all. Uh, the credit spread markets, <clears throat> excuse me, the credit spread markets in uh, in Europe are, uh, are up a touch, but nothing, nothing like they were in 2008. Only a, a fraction higher than normal. So again, the, the credit markets appear to be quite calm. Uh, let's have a look at the Russell 2000 index, which is the small to mid caps. It's declined a little bit, but not very much. And see last night, the market was down again, but really the, the Russell 2000 not down very much. This is all pretty mild stuff. Uh, let's have a look at the US, uh, one of the US banking indices. This is the S&P 500 banks. Um, again, we're not that far off 
off the highs. We've only come down just a fraction off the, off the highs, so really no real indication there. 266 was the highs. We're, we're trading just under 250 at the moment. And the other one I wanted to take a look at was um, just with respect to gold. This is the, the Huey index, which is the uh, the Amex Gold Bugs index, pretty widely watched index. It's a, it's a basket of unhedged gold stocks. And this is on a weekly chart. And you can see that I've got a support and resistance line through here at about 375. And where we are now, and there's been a very sharp fall, as you can see, where we are now is the same level as uh, this basket of unhedged significant gold producers was back in April of 2006. Now at the time, the price of gold was trading at around $700 an ounce. So in other words, the value of gold stocks now is about the same as it was six years ago uh, when gold was less than half the current value. Wind forward, and this is quite a significant support level as well. So if this breaks, um, then things might get nasty with respect to gold stocks. But I think the odds are that it will hold and we'll get a bounce from here because it, it was such significant resistance so many times and then it was significant support on several occasions. So I would think that there's a pretty fair chance that, that it will be support and that we could get a good bounce from here. One forward to February 2010, it was at the same level. Now at that stage gold was about a thousand dollars an ounce. So on a relative basis, gold stocks are unbelievably cheaper compared to the gold price than they have been uh, two years ago and even six years ago. So what's going on in the gold market is completely defies logic. And um, all those things in, in all my years in the market, I always tend to find that things that are defying logic at some point do turn around. And they generally turn around when pretty much everyone is, is about to throw in the towel and give up. And I'm certainly reading and hearing a lot of that with respect to the gold market at the moment. So that's where we're at. Uh, there's no guarantees. Greece is the wild card. But uh, technically, I believe we're at a point where we could see a rebound in markets. Uh, so that's it. Hope that's of interest to you. Cheers.